welcome to another Monday of Squadcast Glory. I'm Camille Salazar Hadaway. <laughs> Joining me is Aaron Caboos Coast. We have uh, Steve Vagvari and Malik Shelp. Uh, boys, welcome. How are you guys feeling this Monday? Fantastic. Good. 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 Fantastic. I love that. I feel like that is Steve's signature. Fantastic. <laughs> Fan it's fantastic. Uh, for those of you at home that don't know, uh, Caboose and I, we are the regulars, but we do like to bring some friends on the squad cast to talk all things nerdy. So it's great having uh, Malik and Steve with us, our writers actually on our website, squadstate.com. And we'll be bringing in more writers because we have experts and I feel like every single category on the website how do you guys find uh working with the team on there you guys are like all experts no that's exactly it. i think yeah. we all kind of just mesh well together bringing our uh specific insights on uh, different corners of the industry together it's really cool yeah and everyone everyone's opened my eyes to a lot of different cool mm. things and like niches too because everybody covers something and then they have their niche that they like and so yeah. learning about everyone's own niche gaming you know trends are cool yeah, it is. So what would you guys say is your two niches or one niche each of you? Uh, I don't know. I, I really like first person shooters. That's always my go to. Yeah. Four yeah. X games, I would say, like Sid Meier's. Those mm. kind. Yeah. I feel like Caboose, it's like anything superhero. I, I yeah. feel like that's your is that your brand? Is that your brand? It <laughs> might be. <laughs> if I had to I guess. Might... I might find an excuse to talk about it every single week, potentially. Yeah, yeah, it's literally every single week, and that that doesn't mean we're not we're not saved here this week because we're going to be talking about some superheroes as well. We're going to start off first talking about cyberpunk crunch culture. We'll go into Kabuza's favorite Spider Man remastered, the Parker swap. We're going to be talking about Steve uh, being revealed for Smash Brothers, uh, which is really interesting, and Genshin Impact and the rise of Triple A. Uh, games from china so uh let's kick things off uh with cyberpunk crunch culture and remember chat you have all the topics that we're going to be talking about so let us know let your voice be heard and yeah. remember if you have any great clips while we are squad casting tweet us at squad state all right let's kick off the show uh you guys taking this one steve yeah yeah i would love to um <laughs> Uh, so to catch people up, last week, uh, Bloomberg's Jason Schreier reported that uh, CD Projekt Red, the developer for Cyberpunk 2077, uh, told the members of its studio that it's going to be entering a mandatory crunch period uh, leading up to its release on November 19th. Uh, the studio had Adam uh, Badowski, I believe, uh, wrote the email uh, to the studio informing them of the crunch. Uh, saying, uh, quote, starting today, the entire development studio is in overtime. Uh, he later went on to say, quote, I, I take it upon myself to receive the full backlash for the, this decision. I know that this is in direct opposition to what we've said about crunch. Uh, it's also in direct opposition to what I personally grew to believe a while back, that crunch should never be the answer. Uh, but we've extended all other possible means of navigating the situation. Um, yeah, leading into the development of Cyberpunk, CD Projekt Red has been adamant of not doing crunch in the past, uh, speaking to various media outlets over the development. Uh, he said that crunch would not be a factor, but unfortunately, it's kind of coming to a head now. Uh, we're almost like a month away from its release. Um, yeah. it, it is worth noting that uh, the CD Projekt Red employees uh, will receive a bonus payout of 10% of the company's annual profits. Yeah. Uh, analysts estimate that CD uh, PR's net income will rise to uh, 500 and 20 million in 2020. And then this morning, uh, CD Projekt Red confirmed that Cyberpunk 2077 has officially gone gold. Yeah. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, going gold means uh, it's past certification on platforms like Xbox, PlayStation. Uh, so right now, it kind of seems that the studio will be working six day work weeks to iron out those last minute bugs and glitches. Uh, of course, with any AAA game that releases the topic of crunch, always seems to pop up. Um, CDPR is usually a pretty transparent uh, development studio, but again, it, it kicks off this conversation of 
crunch culture and what it means of uh, developing these large, uh, huge games. Uh, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to open up this uh, panel um, discussion on, I I'm sure we all can agree crunch is really bad uh, all around, but uh, what are your thoughts on crunch and the crunch culture yeah. associated with that? I mean, no, there's no doubt about it. Like you said, nobody, nobody looks at this situation or hears about the fact that with one month left, they're now kicking into overdrive and they're working six day work weeks and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like nobody looks at that and says, great. Yes. <laughs> work your ass off. All like, the fans nobody. probably look at it and they're excited that their game's on track yeah. because it's worth noting yeah. that the game has been delayed previously. Yeah. Right. Multiple so times. yeah. yeah. Um, it was originally announced like back in 2014. Yes. Somewhere around there. A yes. long time ago. Um, but yeah, it's this is definitely a it's it's an unfortunate situation. Uh obviously you gotta appreciate Jason Schreier's reporting here, especially considering that he was he'd received emails specifically where they said, like, hey, we're not gonna do this. This right. will yeah. not happen with our game. Um there are some there are some statements made, you know, uh, Adam Badowski, who I, I think you you know you were talking about how they were just in general mentioning that they were taking the blame and that they they ex like they understand the backlash that came from it. Um, but Adam Badowski, who's like the head of the studio, he put out a statement saying the last six weeks of our final sprint on the project, we've all spent most of most of our lives on something we care deeply for. The majority of the team understands that push, especially in light of the fact that we've just sent the game to cert and every day brings us visibly closer to shipping a game we want to be proud of. This is one of the hardest decisions I've had to make, but everyone is well compensated for every extra hour put in. Mm -hmm. And like in recent years, 10% of the annual profits that the company generates in 2020 will be split, split directly among the team. So it's not one of those situations where they're just like, they just have to crunch and that's it. Like at least they're being compensated for it. I don't think that justifies it still um it's it's still not good like crunch mm. is just it's just not a good thing you know it, and the it, more that it's yeah. brought to light the more that these reports start coming up for every game it's it's literally been every triple a game that yes. you know of yeah. has has faced this problem and i yeah. appreciate that it's starting to come to light more and more because yeah yeah we need to start getting away from it we need to start getting away from it it this is it's just not good well, and I feel like it's very prominent in the creative industry as a whole, whether it's gaming or animation um, right. or TV. Yep. It's like Film, because maybe. it's creative and people kind of see it as, well, you're doing your dream. Your hobby has become your job. Like that is the dream that you want. And what we fail to realize is that you still need that work-life balance because right. it does mm -hmm. become work. Like we all work in the gaming industry. We love games. We have a passion for games. That's why we pursued a career in gaming. Yep. But we do also have to make sure that we have that uh, balance between work and our life or else you go crazy, right? Like right. You, you can't function um, like this. And the fact that you have now this company or in gaming in general, um, specifically with CD Projekt Red, that's been so adamant ab about being progressive and not having crunch. Even how they are doing cyberpunk and being progressive in their games where you could pick your own gender. Um, mm -hmm. You could pick like your sex, you could pick any anything yep. you want as your character in, in this game. And yet they are kind of taking, to me, 10 steps back by pushing this half-hearted excuse that Yes, we love this game. We've been working on this game forever. This is what's needed. But but in reality, it's not what's needed. We all know that with many games that have been set to release this year, that there will be challenges because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why they just didn't push out. We have to delay the game until yeah. next year. Um, and, yeah. and I feel like that's what they should have done at the beginning of the year when they, they announced the delay till uh, November. They mm -hmm. should have just announced a delay indefinitely until, or just in general till next year. If they, cause it's not like crunch, just you wake up one day and oh crap, the game's releasing <laughs> next month. We got a crunch. There are people on their team whose job is to make sure that the studio is on track for release. Yep. So for me, that is a huge oversight. It, it, it's kind of greedy. It's kind of, um, it, it's toxic. Because think of the people working in those studios who may have 
families, may not mm -hmm. have families, um, but may not be able to work under that pressure and find it so mm -hmm. stressful, regardless if the vast majority of their team agrees which I feel like that's so BS. Uh, There's agrees. so much pressure there, though. Because there is so have, much pressure. Yeah, because you can't and, be the one yeah. person that doesn't work the six day exactly. Week. It, it, it builds animosity within the team, and I think yeah. CD Projekt Red. To be quite honest, if the game has already gone gold, I don't think they have enough fa enough faith in their fans and the people who support them to push the game out on time and say that to avoid crunch, we're going to put out a patch to fix known bugs and stuff later. I think fans would have been happy to get the yeah. game because it's been delayed for so long and then just say, we had to, we didn't want to crunch, we're going to put out patches for bugs and fixes later. Or, mm -hmm. like you said, just plan for it. it. It really feels like they didn't kind of... Obviously, COVID took everyone by surprise, but right. yeah. once everything started getting harder and harder, they should have prepared for it and they should have just gone indefinite with the date it's only going to hurt them to do this crunch and i i think it's causing yes. really bad pr leading mm -hmm. up to the release and if there are bugs with the game when it does release they're going to be judged harder for that because there was crunch it's mm -hmm. it's only going to hurt them on both ends no you're absolutely right i think you hit the nail on the head there um the covid situation like i'd have to imagine had had this year not gone the way that it did that there probably wouldn't have been a crunch. I mean, I maybe. I completely disagree with that. I think I, I, I just think really? I just think that because of COVID, they certainly ran into like a full stop and and some serious challenges that they had to overcome. And that that's just like you gotta understand in, in the game development, there are, there are milestones you hit with yeah. each with each year, with each couple of months. And they probably missed out on a couple of those milestones because of COVID. And I imagine that the adjustment period was tough for them. But regardless, the point being is that they should have delayed the game if it came down to this. I know that there would have been backlash from that. And, and there would have been a lot of memes of, well, this game just got delayed for the 1500th time. Um, and I understand that that is frustrating from a fan perspective. You just want the game. Like, Right. You, not, not a lot of people think about the fact that there are human beings and not robots and machines making yeah. the game and they don't just push big red button to make game yeah. like yeah. people, people <laughs> are working don't. that's how i thought hard. i know <laughs> uh people are working hard behind the scenes on this yeah. stuff and not a lot of fans recognize that and so all they see is it got delayed and it's gonna take longer for me to play the freaking game and they just get angry yeah. so i understand yeah. probably because of how many times they've already delayed it maybe because of how close they were they were like we gotta do this mm -hmm. but even so like for me i i don't care if they delayed it a whole nother year if that i really don't care yeah that, that nobody's yeah. got to work a six-day work week that nobody's got to sacrifice their mental health well, for yeah, my entertainment especially. Yeah. then yeah. that's fine by me you know i, I, I don't care it what it is it, the entertainment industry take as much time as you need all i'm getting out of it is entertainment yeah, yeah. It's, there's the escapism you know it could help with somebody like that people are very passionate about games and stuff like that and, and, it, and it helps them right but at the end of the day it's entertainment and mm -hmm. i know like nobody's mental health nobody's health needs to be sacrificed for my entertainment Ever. Especially in a yeah. year where it's been so um, eye-opening in terms of the toxic culture that is happening behind the doors of some of these studios. Sure. And it's been a highlight throughout the year. I feel like this is just a bad move. I don't know why. And I really don't understand why they wouldn't just wait to release the game next year. If they released yeah. it next year, they could also secure it for next gen as a launch day, a title, like launch the game on next gen. Mm -hmm. Instead, you have the game now releasing this year on current gen and then next year releasing on next gen. Plus, I, I'm, I can't help but think with all the buzz that Cyberpunk has got as like being this game that is going to like really shift gaming and it's getting all this praise before it's released. I yeah. feel like CD Projekt Red may be a little scared to release the game next year 
just because of all the releases that got pushed back um sure. and the yeah. the possibility yeah. you know like they have a lot more to a lot more competition sorry uh for next year that i feel like they do kind of want to to avoid so 2020 can be the year of cyberpunk mm -hmm. yeah i just i just really want cyberpunk to be good and it's like you said caboose i don't care if it takes another year yeah. and especially if it's if if it's for them because if these people are pushed to their mental limits and they're exhausted and they are suffering it's not going to be it's not going to be good for the game it doesn't look good on cj Pro cd project red and these people aren't going to be happy they're not going to why why would you want to push somebody who's pursuing something they love to overexert themselves for that yeah it just doesn't make sense you don't want to lose these people that have passions for making game changing video games you know industry breaking video games just because you wanted to get it out on a deadline it just doesn't mm -hmm. make sense to do it mm -hmm. and it, it it makes me question um how much pressure the team might have had uh before they reached this point have they kind of been pressured into working overtime right uh you know yeah. before they officially announced crunch is going to have to happen you know what I mean? Like, I feel like they might have already practiced some of this behavior of crunch and then had to put out a statement for fear of like bad PR if like one of their employees were to come out before the studio um, did. So so the anticipation, like, you know, they, they're they smart. They have their legal team. They have their PR mm -hmm. team to kind of make them look good that they are paying these people. I know Aang in chat mentioned that at least they're they're getting paid more yes it, it's great that they're getting bonuses for this mm -hmm. but at the same time is this they're now working. what we yeah. they're yeah. still yeah. working a very stressful month if we give it to them yeah. that it, it's a month that they're yeah. pushing this crunch to which i'm pretty sure it, it was more than a month that they're doing this mm -hmm. um and that could be mentally taxing on any individual and it's just it's just like is that what we've come to it, it does this mean now with all of these cases crunch is inevitable no i don't it doesn't have so. to be it it, to it shouldn't be is yeah. the thing. but we unfortunately it's become the norm it's mm -hmm. it, it has become the norm every game has crunch yeah. Yeah, you look back at Naughty Dog with Last of Us Part Two. That was a big one. Uh, Rockstar yep. with Red Dead Redemption Two. Um, yep. Again, you brought it up before, Caboose. Like any AAA game, you go back to like whether you know it or not, probably did crunch. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I think I think one thing that is interesting to all of this is that one has to kind of question exactly how much work still needs to be done on this game. If you if you break it down. By the time this game releases, it's only seven days of work extra. Like that's not a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like how yeah. like I, obviously I'm not a developer. I, I don't I don't know the first thing about what goes into making a game. But if if it came down to just pushing it even a week out or a month out, I'm sure they could have wrapped up what they need to be doing right now. Again, I, I could be totally I off base here. But um, I think yeah. it's the loss of money, right? Like think of all of, of the marketing that went into it, mm -hmm. all their partnerships, all their deals, yeah. toys, mer like merchandising, like all of that stuff is reliant on the release day because they have their plans uh, for how they're going to really market this game, sell products to people. And it's just unfortunate that crunch is pretty much a result of you have these business guys that are like well we need the product because we need mm -hmm. money and then you have yeah. the development team that is literally pushing this title on their backs um and they're just getting stomped on <laughs> by all their <laughs> senior staff and you you really would hope that studios do believe that crunch isn't essential but after all these stories this year i'm i'm really starting to think that this a lot of these studios are talking but not walking the walk of eliminating crunch yep yeah yeah and it starts at the top unfortunately it's, it uh, it's one of those things where as a developer um if it probably feels like you really just like you don't got too much say you yeah. know you, if you if you speak up on it you maybe have the the risk of losing your job um and and in part it's because uh throughout the industry it feels like this thing that is almost an obligation like if you're working yes. on this game you better at some point expect 
that you're going to either be working a six day work week or working overtime through the entirety of your five day work week, you know? And, and mm-hmm. that just, yeah. again, the more that stories like cyberpunk, like the last of us part two, like red dead redemption two, the more that those stories start coming to light, the more that people start reporting on this, although like, I have my disagreements with Jason Schreier and a little bit of his demeanor, but sure. regardless, the fact that he's still able to get this information, to gather this information, to put it out there, it, you know, it, it shakes things up and that's what we need. We need more of this so that when the next game comes along and the head of the studio starts to think, okay, we're going to, we're going to meet this deadline. Let's get to crunching. They maybe have to think twice about mm-hmm. that because of potential reports that could come out. And because of bad PR that could be coming towards the studio. Uh, yeah. I, I just, it, it's got to change. This stuff has got to change for the sake oh, yeah. of people's like health, for the and, sake yeah. of their well being. And I think from a community standpoint, like it's easy. I, I see it all the time. Like I think people often forget that people are behind those games, making those yes. games, yeah. spending hours at the studio making Cyberpunk instead of being with their family. And I think. The more people are cognizant about that, the more people can be vocal and say, well, okay, we don't need this game on November 19th. Like it can be pushed. It's not the end of the world. We can, we can wait. Unfortunately, I feel like the, you know, senior staff at a lot of these studios, the people making these decisions won't budge unless they start to see money flowing out of their Mm -hmm. pockets. And that comes from consumers. You know, if we, really do believe in this and you know if we see that there's a lot of abuse happening with a specific titles development um with the staff sorry on a specific titles development then you know let 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 us our voices be heard through our pockets (laughs) with your wallet exactly too there though is that it's hard because it is hard those people still put a lot of work into the game Mm -hmm. and to then boycott it and essentially just completely avoid that work that was put into the game makes them feel like they they did all it for nothing you're right that that is probably one of the only answers here is that even with all that crunch even with bad pr people still buy the games but yeah. the catch-22 the double-edged sword of it is that if you don't you make the the developers feel you know like they they did it all for nothing and that's it's tough it's a really tough situation um i guess the only thing we can do is just hope that more of these reports come to light and then more people start yelling about it and that more people voice their opinions rather than just staying silent. Um, And maybe as years go by, as more games release, we start to see a bit of a change. It's, it's, I, I mean, from where we're sitting in the positions that we're in, that's, that's the most we can do, which is, which is very difficult. And I, I feel for all the developers working on the game who are putting in the amount of work that they're putting. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's so hard to say anything except that it's just really unfortunate. Yeah. Um, so, I do want to, you, you well said, sorry, continue. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that crunch is something that is very prevalent in the film industry yes. and not so much with the actors, but more with the editors and the production crews and things like yep. that. So is the, just to kind of throw this question out there, because of something that has been so, you know, such a founding structure, a part of the film industry, do you think that that's going to kind of permeate into gaming and become, crunch is just going to become the new normal if we let it? Or do you think there's time to still disrupt that? I think there's time to disrupt it. Um, I think it will, it, we're very close. Well, it was normalized, right? Um, yeah. But because it's, being brought up in conversations a lot, especially this year, I feel like there's a chance here to really shift that. Um, We've seen, and you mentioned the film industry, that doesn't do well for all of the union workers in the film industry that continue to go on strike because they're being overworked and underpaid. Right. Um, So we, we don't want to experience that in gaming. So it's what we do. Uh, Aang in chat does ask as well. And I'm going to put this out to you guys. uh, Do we think that we'll ever see a boycott against crunch? No, I think, I think maybe you'll see developers go on strike sure. at some yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of a fan or community perspective, no. Yeah. 
correct me to, if I'm oh go go ahead. No, uh, I was just going to say to uh, to your point like I think there's enough people that don't even know this is going on that just yeah. go go into like an EB games or a yeah. Best Buy and they're like oh Cyberpunk's out cool I'm going to buy it not even mm-hmm. knowing that this game was announced in 2014 whatever and had this long drawn out development cycle crunch and all that no one knows about that like we're the people in tune with that sort of stuff but yeah un- unless like mainstream media picks this stuff up and starts getting that out on like the news i i, I don't see there being like a, a community backed uh, uh you know people aren't going to start uh, boycotting the yeah, game right yeah yeah, yeah. unfortunately <laughs> Yeah, but it, it's it's like what uh Kabu said earlier there there's two sides to this story um in terms of if you were to boycott uh who's being affected mm-hmm. um yeah. because these a lot of passion goes into these games so i hope for the future we don't see crunch but it's very likely that we will it's more up to us to decide um how much we'll stand for this so on that note, <laughs> let's move on. That was so different. To a much less controversial you know, topic. This is so no, it's not even controversial. Like that is just depressing crunch. Yeah. So I'm happy yeah. to move on a little bit. Uh, to- <laughs>